What's up everybody, Rob here. So, summer's just about upon us and you know what that means. Going outside and enjoying a nice barbecue. Firing up the grill, having some hot dogs, hamburgers, and maybe some grilled chicken, you know, maybe a shish kebab or something like that. Nice barbecue, right? Wrong. That's not barbecuing. That's called grilling. There is a huge difference. Now up here in the north, we have been in, and I'm under my whole life, I've been under the impression that you know, any kind of food being cooked outside is collectively known as a barbecue. And quite recently, there have been a, well, online, a group of Southerners and Westerners that have thoroughly debased me of this notion. No, that's grilling, not barbecue. Barbecue is an art form that we Northerners up here just don't quite understand all that well. And, um, yeah, well, actually, I'm sort of semi-inclined to agree. Now, the main difference between grilling and barbecuing is that grilling involves cooking the meat directly over a very high heat source for a very short period of time, whereas barbecue is a very low heat source for a very extended period of time, often several hours, and the meat is flavored by the wood that it is cooked with. Now, barbecuing has a very long tradition in the United States. The word itself comes from the Spanish word barbacoa, which in turn is derived from the Arawak word Arabiku, which means something along the lines of framework of sticks set upon posts, which is how the meat would have been cooked during that particular era, and the word just sort of evolved from there. Barbecue has evolved greatly over the years, based primarily upon geography, which each region claiming to have the best barbecue in the country, and thereby in the world, and um, yeah, barbecue for some reason is something that never really caught on in other countries. I know there's Korean barbecue now, but um, yeah, for some reason, this is probably the most uniquely American style of food. If you know, most of the other food like pizzas, yes, yeah, it's an American food, but it has origins in Italy. And most of our other food has, you know, that is considered American food is usually an Americanized version of somebody else's food. And um, yeah, but for some reason, barbecue is just something that is unique to the United States. So uh, I'm just going to be breaking down really briefly. That's it for the history lesson, by the way. I'm just going to be breaking down really briefly the various regional flavors of barbecue and um, hope you enjoy it. Oh, and as a little bit of a side warning here, um, I'm going to be speaking in extremely broad terms and there is a tremendous amount of variation within each region. So um, I don't want to hear any complaints from you guys. Oh, you didn't mention about like the particular sauce that's from over here or that's the, that's not how the barbecue joint I go to. They do it this. Yeah, I know. There's going to be tremendous regional variations and yeah, yeah I, I get it. I get it. I'm just a Yankee. I'm trying to make sense of all this here. Okay, you gotta work with me, people. Okay, limitations. I have them. All right, first up, we have Brooklyn barbecue, which is an abomination against God and man. See, now, a couple months ago, there was a thing that was going around Twitter about how Brooklyn barbecue, I think it was Huffington Post, maybe, I don't know. They did a thing, an article about um, Brooklyn barbecue is taking the world by storm. No, it's not. Okay, no, it's not. It's an abomination, and um, just... Brooklyn, please stay in your lane. Now, this is someone who lives right outside New York City, okay? I got a lot of regional pride right here. Um, you know, I'm the closest to being a New Yorker, short of actually living in New York. And I'm telling you straight out right now, no. You do not, just some regions just can't do things. Like, New Yorkers, New Jerseyans, we can't do barbecue. Just like, you know, I don't expect Minnesotans to be able to do, you know, Taylor ham, egg and cheese on a hard roll. I'm sorry, you just can't do it. You can try, you're going to fail, and you're going to look like an idiot in the process. Please, for the love of God and all that is good and holy, stop. All right, now the first real barbecue we're looking at right here is from the Carolinas. Now, Carolinas represent the oldest barbecue styles in the U.S. and is divided into several different regional variants. Now, the first one is the Eastern North Carolina barbecue, which features vinegar-based sauce, usually apple cider vinegar, mixed with pepper, and um, they usually use the entire pig, all parts or all the meat parts of the pig, while while barbecuing, and this is often pulled apart like you see here, or shredded, and served on sandwiches. Now, North Carolina also features the Western style, or the Lexington dip, or the Piedmont style, which features a very thin sauce made of vinegar, but it is based on tomato, or has tomato in it, especially after the invention of tomato ketchup in the 1870s. And also, instead of using the entire pig like is used in the Eastern variant, it uses primarily the pork shoulder, though it is still shredded and served on a sandwich. Now, to round out the Carolinas, you have the South Carolina style, which is very similar to the Eastern North Carolina style in that it uses the entire pig, and also, like both other Carolina styles, it is usually shredded and served on a sandwich, though not always. Uh, what makes it unique, though, is that it uses a mustard-based sauce instead of a vinegar-based sauce or a tomato-based one. So there you go. It's the South Carolina mustard sauce. Not particularly well-known or popular, but still 
a very unique touch to that particular region. Now, moving on from the Carolinas, we have Texas. Now, Texas has multiple regional styles, but what all these styles have in common is their use of both pork and beef. Now, uh, when they do use pork, it's either the entire pig, you know, all the parts of it, or they would often use the ribs specifically. Texas styles oftentimes, though, specialize in the brisket, which is made from beef. What you see here in front of you now is Eastern Texas style, which is made with mop sauce. Now, the brisket here is... Uh, coated in sauce, which is applied with a mop, as you can see there. And um, yeah, I've actually seen them with full-size mops. This is a smaller one, but I've seen it done with um, like a full-size, like janitor's mop, you know, for a particularly big piece. In any case, um, after you smoke it, it is then simmered in the sauce until it becomes super tender and then it falls apart. No knife required. Texas is also home to the central style tradition, which like its eastern counterpart, focuses primarily on the brisket of beef, but unlike its counterpart, which relies heavily on the mop sauce, there is no sauce usually present in the central Texas style. The meat would be covered with a dry rub of ground up spices and simply smoked and served as is. The idea that you would add sauce to them is somewhat abhorrent to this particular style. Uh, the meat should really stand out on its own and not be covered up with, you know, shouldn't be slathered in some kind of sauce. Um, really, that's almost a sign of a poor quality piece of meat uh, that, you, that you would have to cover up. Multiple types of wood are used in both particular styles, though oak is particularly popular. All right, moving up north from Texas, we have the Memphis style. Now, Memphis style barbecue features pork yet again, like the North Carolina style, and in many different types, but mostly it is famous for use of the ribs and pulled pork, now uh, which case the pork shoulder or the pork butt is pulled apart or shredded after roasting. Usually it is served as part of a sandwich, but not always. Now, uh, when it does have ribs, which you see here, the ribs feature a dry rub, which is a mixture of spice, which is based around paprika, but also had its, has added in garlic, cayenne pepper, salt, cumin, and pretty much other spices. You would dry rub it and then, um, and then smoke it or cook it on, under very low heat. There are two major types of rakes. There's the dry rib, which is just served with the dry rub on it, and um, that's pretty much it. And there's also wet ribs, which are coated with a thin vinegar and tomato-based sauce, which is then infused with various spices. Now, this is very similar to the Western North Carolina version. There's going to be some crossover given that, you know, Tennessee and North Carolina do, in fact, border each other. So they're going to have some crossover there. All right, we're moving back west again to Kansas City. Now, Kansas City style is famous for using pretty much any kind of meat, but mostly beef is king. Now, uh, at, back during the 1800s, cattle would be driven up from where they were raised in Texas, driven up north to processing plants, usually around Chicago in that area, and Kansas City was along the way. It was a stopover, and, well, you know, obviously they well, acquired a taste for beef. Um, in any case, the most famous aspect of Kansas City style barbecue is the sauce, which is a thick tomato-based sauce that is spicy and sweet at the same time. It's, when you think barbecue, that's pretty much, like when you go to McDonald's and they have the McRib there, and I've never had one because I don't eat that garbage, but basically it's a, well, it's a mass-produced, hybridized version of Kansas City style. Like the, you go to um, any kind of store, you know, you see barbecue sauce there, that's Kansas City style. Now, Kansas City style is very similar to St. Louis style, which St. Louis style basically also focuses on the same thick, heavy tomato-based sauce, but at the same time, it focuses primarily on the use of pig, specifically the ribs, and also the use of pork snouts, which apparently is a delicacy. You basically take the pork snouts, you fry them, and you simmer them in barbecue sauce, and um, apparently it's delicious. I don't know. I've never tried it, and um, I'll just take everybody's word for it on that one. All right, so we've covered probably the more famous types of barbecue in the U.S., the big three being the Texas style, the Carolina style, and the Kansas City style. But I figured I'd, you know, take a brief look at some of the less famous types. What you see here is Kentucky style. Now, Kentucky had a very extensive wool trade throughout the 1800s, and as such, Kentucky barbecue features lamb or mutton. Mutton is basically just a sheep that is about a year old or older. And it is served with a vinegar-based sauce called mutton sauce. It's not particularly well-known and not particularly popular or famous throughout the country, but, you know, hey, I figured I'd mention it anyway. And if you like lamb, yeah, give it a try. I actually do like lamb, but it's, it's really expensive, though, so I don't really have it that often, but, you know, yeah, worth it, maybe worth a try one day.
All right, next up in the lesser known styles is the Alabama style. Now, Alabama is usually pork based and uses most of the animal, especially the ribs, the shoulder, and the butt. And, um, you know, just smoked pretty standard like uh, most of the other styles. But what's famous in what sets Alabama apart is its use of white sauce, which is a mayonnaise based sauce and often includes apple cider vinegar, lemon juice, horseradish, salt, pepper, and hot sauce, and occasionally some other spices as well. Uh, apparently, it goes really well with chicken. Um, sometimes fried chicken, sometimes just, you know, grilled or, uh, baked chicken, but, you know, uh, yeah, it's, um, also particularly good, I've, I've been told, I've never had this, but it's particularly good on pulled pork sandwiches, as well as, um, you know, as a general dipping sauce, so, yeah, there you go, Alabama-style white sauce, there you go. All right, and last up, we have the Chicago style. Now, you're gonna say, Rob, you just said Northerners don't know how to do, you know, you, you Yankees don't know how to do barbecue. Well, that is true. But for every rule, there is an exception. Now, Chicago style is basically a confluence of several different styles merged together. Traditionally, cattle would be driven up north to processing plants in the Midwest, and Chicago was a major hub of the meat industry. So there's a big market for that sort of thing in this area. And then combine that with the Great Migration in the early 20th century, where flocks of people, usually African-American, moved up north to Chicago, hoping for a better life up there and they took their barbecue styles with them. At the same time, Chicago also was the home to many immigrants, especially from Eastern Europe, who brought their love of sausage and other smoked meat products, and thus Chicago style was born. Now, the people who pioneered Chicago style were generally on the poorer side, so they had to use an inferior, or what is perceived as an inferior cut of meat, using primarily the pork short rib, which is particularly fatty and not desirable for other types of barbecue, and they would get them either very cheap or sometimes just free. They would just be given away because, you know, uh, nobody else really wanted them. In any case, they would use this as well as uh, sausages as well, which was, again, sausage, it's just sort of, um, you know, the leftover meats, you grind it up and you put it in a casing. The meat would then be smoked in what's known as an aquarium box, which is pretty much what it sounds like. It's a glass and wooden box, or um, nowadays they're glass and metal, and you attach this to a very large chimney, and this allows the meat to be smoked in a very narrow, confined area, which is very good in a large city where space is at a premium. So they are just a very, very brief look at the different types of barbecue styles in the United States. Barbecue is pretty much a major source of pride in various parts of the country. It is a culinary tradition that is unique to the United States. Now, other countries, you know, did smoke meat. It's not something that's itself unique to the U.S., but it really never reached quite the heights that it does here. So, uh, yeah, there you go. And um, I have had real barbecue on some occasions. I have traveled a bit. And um, it's absolutely delicious. Um, yeah, if, you, if you've if you never tried real barbecue, I don't mean like that mass-produced process stuff you get, like, you know, the McRib or whatever it is. I'm talking like the real deal stuff. If you have a chance to try it out, by all means do so. The stuff is fantastic. I do have a smoker uh, here um, in my backyard. Um, yeah, I've tried some simple recipes. It turns out relatively well. Um, I think I might be doing something wrong. I, I'm still trying to figure out like the little quirks in it because, you know, you're cooking over, you know, coals and, um, you know, it's not, you can't just turn a knob there, you know, and adjust the heat and all that stuff. And uh, I'm not sure I'm soaking the, the wood chips properly and all that stuff. You know, I'm, I'm probably making some amateurish mistake, but, you know, whatever. It's delicious stuff. I love it. Um, any case, um, leave a comment below as to your favorite barbecue place if you have one. If you have a recipe, uh, by all means leave the recipe there too. I'm cool with that as well. Um, as always, hit the like and subscribe button. More videos will be coming out whenever I get around to it. And have a good day. Or don't have a good day. You're adults, you can have any kind of day you want. You're free to do that because this is America. If you're not in America, well, I can't help you there. See ya.